HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have sights and sounds from the Creative Circles Arts for All event and the Hopkinton High School HCA Arts Show. Matt Clark will get you up to date with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. But first, some happenings in town you should know about, including the result of the Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball team in the state championship. On Saturday, March 17th, the Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball team ended their terrific season with a loss to Foxborough in the state championship at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, Massachusetts by a final score of 49 to 41. Foxborough ended the game on a 15-2 run and outscored Hopkinton 32-14 in the second half to capture the Division II state championship. Foxborough captured their first state title in 23 years, while Hopkinton attempted to capture their first since 2001. Ivy Goglin put up a team-high 15 points and 11 rebounds for the Hillers while Regan Caveney added 9 points and 5 rebounds. Hopkinton ends an incredible season with 21 wins and 5 losses. The Live For Evan Red Tie Affair was a success. The event raised $27,000 towards the Live For Evan Fund which seeks to provide temporary housing solutions for families of children with heart disease. The organization has helped house over 20 families from around the world who have children being treated in Boston's world-class heart centers. The Red Tie event took place at the Crystal Ballroom in Milford and raised just $3,000 short of their $30,000 goal. This past week, the school committee and the Board of Selectmen held a joint meeting to discuss the 2019 budget. Precisely, what are we looking at? We are looking at a budget proposal that will have an overall tax impact of 5% or less. Town Manager Norman Kumalu started off the meeting talking about deficits and costs that can go towards the budget. He mentioned the snow and ice budget had a deficit of $600,000 snow and ice. Our original request had already identified a $400,000 deficit. I can share with you to this date that deficit is now at 600000 This morning I received an email from the DPW director asking to deficit spend mm -hmm. an additional 300000 in light of the storms that are coming forth. And therefore, the funds that are relieved from the discussions regarding capital do add to the solution going forward. One of the goals of the meeting was to discuss ways to decrease the 7.4 increase of the school committee budget in order to avoid going over the projected town tax rate increase of 5% for 2019. We, we come up against a place um, where it's really challenging to find additional cuts. And so I think as part of that process and ongoing discussions, the ways in which Mr. Kamalo uh, delineated the, the things that are, are happening in the different areas of the budget planning um, around re redirecting funding sources, um, adjustments to operating budget, as well as um, 
the capital discussion. I think th those things are very helpful, and these are all things that we've been jointly discussing. My understanding of municipal finance, and it's, it's very limited, but that uh, it's kind of frowned on to always be, to go to free cash for operating expenses. Um, snow and ice is one of the items that free cash is expected to be used for. That that's kind of one of the accepted um, uses for it. But the thought being that municipalities should be able to be funding their expected expenses out of the expected revenues. The school committee had concerns that further cuts could lead to insufficient funds to maintain all of the current school programs. I am, I don't feel like there are good options for us on the table. Uh, I feel like we are looking at what is the least bad in some ways. I, I feel like we put forth the budget that we felt was best. That said, I do feel like we all have a, a fiduciary responsibility to work for the taxpayers and to move forward in the best way we can. We understand that it's a significant amount of money that we need to operate the schools and we understand the stress that that puts on the taxpayers and we are doing everything we can to mitigate that but we are experiencing unprecedented growth. The general education budget when we initially proposed our budget back in January was a 0.25 percent increase general education. 0.25 percent increase in general education I mean just to demonstrate that there are no more line items to cut teensy bits from here and there. A 0.25% for the general education population increase, just, I mean, prices go up more than 0.25%. Well, right now when we're getting down to the 11th hour and we're, we're saying, oh my God, we can't cut this, we can't cut that, it's, that should have been taken care of weeks ago. People should have gotten down there and really thought about the, when we talked about a 5% budget weeks ago, and we talked about a, uh, cutting out a million two weeks ago, that's when it should have been done. It shouldn't have come right down to today and, and, and maybe another two weeks and another two weeks. Next year, we really have to do something a little bit better. We've also, we've also talked about our projections. I've been here for nine years. We've been lucky that our projections have worked well for us that come September, what we put forth at town meeting, what we would have put forth at town meeting in May still works out to be fine come September. So I, I, I just want the public to know that the, the, the budget is actually balanced in September when the selectmen set the tax rate. A number of participants in the meeting noted that planning the budget is running too far behind. I have a real hard time then voting on the overall budget knowing they, they went ahead and cut you know, fifth grade music or whatever it is, and when we wouldn't have to cut fifth grade music. Well, no, but so they just the timing of this is a big concern to me. Right, but I'm sure that they, I'm sure that Mr. Kamala Wari will, will have all of the. He's not going to find out at nine fifteen that that we found nine hundred thousand. Right, but I think it's important that we all recognize and agree that all the cards will be on the table before we all start start taking votes. The reason we yeah. don't have a budget a month and a half ago is because. Our board wasn't comfortable accepting a 7 plus percent increase on the school side and a 7 percent increase on the town side and handing that off to the townspeople. We are not near the number that you asked us to be at, which was we left within our heads 714. And we're a couple hundred thousand dollars away from that. So we cannot make another couple of hundred thousand dollar cuts to our budget without affecting program just want to make that clear. So I'm just going to trust that everybody does the best they can and then we go to the townspeople and say this is the best we can do. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and give everybody you know better than level service and for, for the best bang for their buck and that's all I think that the um, townspeople can ask of us. As I have said before this will not be a perfect solution. We may not get the cuts at the level that has been defined we may not limit our funding sources to only one source. Uh, we will do the best we can uh, to address all of the issues that have been raised. At the end of the budget discussion, Selectman Claire Wright asked about the cost of the tax increase on a single family home. Just to put this in plain English or in plain dollars and cents so we all understand what we're talking about. Um, the previous tax increase summary that we were working off of 
with a 7.18% increase um, translated into for an average home value of 571 400 and I think it's $99,000, it translated into an increase of $693 on top of what people are already paying. So that's what we're talking about. If we reduce so that we are not looking at a 7.18 impact, we're hopefully looking at a 5% increase. What is the dollar increase on an average single family home that we will be talking about? That number is $489. $489. Okay, thank you. The Board of Selectmen will continue discussing the budget next Tuesday, and the school committee will discuss their budget with the Board of Selectmen on Thursday, March 29th. This week at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts was the always impressive Hopkinton High School Art Show. Here is a look at some of the work on display. Um, so there are 13 students in the show, which is pretty nice, and it's a pretty big variety of um, different uh, artists of different mediums, which is kind of cool. A lot of times it's predominantly, uh, well, it's still predominantly two-dimensional artists, but as our, our Z department is sort of shifting and becoming more three-dimensional, it's nice to see some models and um, some mold making. Uh, I have nine pieces on display today, and I'm really influenced by negative space, so I think it's really interesting. Um, the negative space around people, so also like taking the shadow around someone. I have a piece over there where it's my cross country team all huddled up together, and I cut out like the sky basically in like the photo, and I painted just the face, like the shadows around the faces. And I, I really think that's interesting and something cool to explore. So, uh, how many pieces of work do you have on display here today? I have six. How long have you been doing art for? Um, I've been doing seriously for like about four years, but I. Like even from before I could talk, I, my parents told me stories about how I would draw on the walls with my sisters and stuff like that. And my older sister was always a big inspiration, always pushing me to do art, so I've been doing it for a while. Um, I do photography advanced with um, Julie Underdaw and Patrick Webb, um, Mr. Worrell's class. Alright, and uh, how long have you been interested in photography? Um, I've been interested in photography like since like the 8th grade. My sister like got a camera, like a DSLR. And like I really liked it, but I never had the chance to like take any photos because I didn't like know how the camera worked. And I took photography last year, and I like learned what an exposure is and all that type of stuff. And like I've really grown to love it. Um, and, and one interesting thing of note in this show, I think, is uh, several of the students have done this sort of uh, old analog and new digital kind of mix. Some of the students are shooting film digitizing the negatives and printing digitally, and that, that's really cool. Um, so I have about three pieces, and they're all film photography, because that's mainly what I've been dealing with the past couple of years. So um, one of those, one of mine. And uh, what motivated uh, your work? Um, a lot of my motivation is just by how I feel like people can get a lot out of a certain piece of photography, and how photography can really be interpreted on its own based on just the person viewing it, and I feel like that is a really inspiring thing to me. Um, I have three pieces up in total, this one, and that one, and one over there. Excellent. How long have you been doing photography for? Well, I've been interested in it for quite some time now, but I only just started taking photography classes at the high school in my junior year, and I'm a senior now, so... Uh, can you talk about what motivated your work? Um, yeah, well, for this one, this one's part of a project that I'm doing um, about the public versus private selves, and um, for the project, I'm going to present the pictures as a diptych, but for the show, I just wanted it to be a standalone portrait because I thought that it was really strong, and I loved the light in it, and um, I thought that it was just a really strong portrait. This picture actually was one of my dreams, and so this building is kind of like a virtual reality, and this circle, is, I was going to put a moon behind the building, but I don't have time to create like a, a, an earth. It's actually an earth, and so this one, like you can see, that's a, actually a balloon, so it's a floating building, and you can only attend, like, enter into the building by this, this way, and it's breaking. There are four pieces here tonight. 
Excellent. Uh, can you tell us about your some of your pieces on display? Yeah, I got one right here. So it's uh, called Wild. It's a picture of um, a winter landscape. It's supposed to um, depict a traditional cut paper piece like this one over here. It's uh, but it's a digital piece, and I try to emulate that process digitally. That's what I focus on in my pieces. So that's what my theme is: focusing on uh, traditional pieces in a digital format. Yep, some over there, uh, movie poster, uh, a few others here. Yeah, so I have um, six pieces, I believe, and this one big one over here, which is my model that I created in my independent study. Um, and a lot of them were projects that I did within class. Um, and some of them were part of my independent study, which was a more like specified um, art class that I chose to do this year since um, I'm going to college next year and I really want to do architecture. So I wanted to do a class where I could focus on my love for architecture and kind of get a feel for it. In a lot of my work, I like to do a lot of detail drawing um, with uh, a lot of repetition and I really like to use pen and ink as well. Um, this is my favorite medium, I think. I have six pieces in this show. Uh, how long have you been doing artwork for? Um, I was start doing art for in high school, so it's like two or three years. Excellent. Um, and uh, what are some of the pieces you have? Is there any around here? Um, this two sculpture is mine. Um, this is inspired by the Sigma building. I really like the color and the reflection of this big building. So I make some small things, like for example, it's a perfume bottom and a small sculpture. And uh, this is my sketchbook for my inspiration. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll take you to the Creative Circles Arts for All event at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus a whole lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. Songwriters, artists, and poets were among those who gathered at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts to share their pieces of work at the Creative Circles Arts for All event. This year's annual event was hosted by Jerry Holland and Cynthia Franca. Here's a look. Songwriters, artists, and poets were among some of those who gathered at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts to share their pieces of work at the Creative Circles Arts for All event. The, the dance I will be performing right now, it's actually from the rural land of India. Rural, I say, because there are certain parts of India where uh, they still don't have electricity, they don't have a lot of source of entertainment, so they just do songs and dance and drama and theaters to entertain themselves. They even do art, but their form of art is a little different, so I can share with that maybe later when we were, we were you know, discussing the things. So this is more to the form. There are two songs clubbed together. <laughs> Creative Circles program. I'm Cynthia França. I'm one co-host with Jerry Holland of the program Creative Circles Arch for All. It's an inclusive program in town. And tonight we have our Creative Circles Small Work Show. We have 24 amazing arts you have to come to check. It's, uh, the show will be by April 16 in Barn Loft Gallery at HCA. And tonight we're doing a round robin event. What is that? People like sharing poetry, people sharing dance, visual arts, um, um, songs. This is our program. And you have like programs for the year. So we have April, May, September, October, and November. Come and join us. <laughs> is this the first time you've done this? Is there going to be more of these coming up as well? Yes. For, uh, you have the round robin uh, once a year. 
Uh, you start Creative Circles last year in 2017. That was our first program. This is our second year at ATA here. And uh, you're doing our round robin again next year, February, March. You'll be doing the round robin event. It's very nice for people sharing art, inspire each other. This is our goal. This is our mission. Build together a strong community through the arts. Salt has a spark of effect, and alcohol has sort of like a, at least these fear like uh, impressions. And um, some of the other paintings I get are from palettes, totally random. And I like this one because it reminded me of Helen Francacola's work, work in Spain. That's just from a, the back side of a pad. I'm having fun with it. I do a lot of florals. I started doing some trees. I like nature things, but I love with plants and florals. and animals and so I am playing as well. Um, so it's new. So this was sort of my first time hanging anything up on a wall except for other people that have commissioned me. I've done house portraits and um, yeah, mostly house portraits. We can watch the sunflowers bloom and grow in the light of the golden sun. This moment is here now, precious and dear now, release the future and past. Breathe in this moment, notice this moment. Make this moment last, my friends. Make this moment last. A little teapot in the corner. However, when I was driving here with Caroline, she said I um, mentioned, oh, did you name it? I'm a little teapot. <laughs> <laughs> to the senior center because I always worked as a graphic artist and uh, to me it wasn't work, I loved doing what I did. So I turned that piece, I'm a little teapot, um, <laughs> into cards. And what I do is I go in with a pen and I uh, put some silver in it and uh, uh, send them to people. So I started doing like, uh, it's tough because my mom's here, so, but I, I, I was doing what you would consider graffiti. Um, which is illegal, uh, <laughs> although I think it's the most un misunderstood, underappreciated form of art. I think it's the most pure form of art in that there's, you're not ever selling it and you're doing it for the public. And, um, you know, I, they're in, you know, graffiti artists have un unwritten codes and things, and I understand all the, um, you know, the anti graffiti side of things. But um, Shepard Ferry, who did the Obama Hope image, um, that was the first time I realized like how powerful art was as a social movement and it, you know I always just envisioned art as purely an aesthetic um, endeavor and so I realized you know that you can actually change people's minds um, through art. But I'm also a teacher here um, and in a few other places and um, this somebody I think Jerry you mentioned what's the inspiration. The inspiration is I, I do a lot of uh, urban landscapes, um, edgy kind of landscapes. I don't know if maybe some of you have seen my work, but it's, um, this was a departure. I needed a departure. And every once in a while I do something really calming, like a landscape or a, or a bobblehead. <laughs> and I do, you know, it's just, for me, it's, um, I think I'm part photographer because I don't work plein air. I work from reference photos. So I have the the uh, Kill Bill piece out there with Beatrix Kiddo, and uh, the inspiration for that was uh, International Women's Day. I was like, oh, I should paint something with a strong woman. I had two little girls, and I told my oldest daughter, Joelle, that that's, that's her with the sword. Oh, so, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I don't know. It's, my inspiration is always different, but the, the main thing is I love creating art. So, you know, I've used oils and, and, and I mix things together. And so anyways, um, I told Cynthia I was going to get it done in an hour. You did. And I did. <laughs> it was done in an hour. And what I did was I just started to look at the designs. I found it to be very exciting. I haven't really been in the studio to kind of work and do something different. Actually, I was a pianist. I studied classical piano and that's what I did. That, that's my love. And so now I'm getting older, can't my muscles are not working as well and stuff. But anyway, so I just started to do line design and I said, okay, I'll go with that. And then I just started to apply the acrylic and I went, okay.
yeah, that looks pretty cool. Let me see what else can I do. Don't screw it up now. Don't add any purple or red to that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I do poetry. I'm a poet, and I do also ceramic pieces. This is my piece, a bridge of true connections. It's a ceramic piece there, the little square. Um, I started ceramic classes uh, last year, and when I made this piece, uh, I wrote a poem. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 23rd at 5 p.m., Massachusetts award-winning writer and musician Beth DeSombre shares her original music and insight on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, March 26th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 28th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. Tune in and join the conversation. On Thursday, March 29th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And we have a lot of new programming coming to air on HCAM Ed. First, we have the Hillers girls basketball team facing off against Foxborough in the state finals. We also have the latest from the Hopkinton Music in Our School concert series. And finally, the HHS Drama Ensemble's production of Harvey will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.